Hey there, what's going on everyone? My name is Rabbit. I cannot count for shit. And welcome to episode 111, yes, 111 of our 100% item guide and walkthrough for Legend of Lagaya. So as I'm sure you can tell just from this intro itself, I did decide to give myself a little bit of a break. Obviously my voice was starting to die and I thought since we have such an exciting fight awaiting us, let's just come back together fresh and alive and ready to rock and roll. So as for the specific note and I guess you could say a joke that I am making, I stated at the opening of our last episode and I caught this while I was editing that that was episode 109 when it actually was episode 110. So my apologies for those of you who just kind of marathon these and maybe felt confused or like you had missed an episode. No, it was just two 109s in a row because last episode was 110. And I don't know why I thought 109. That doesn't even sound right. But nevertheless, this is 111. And in our previous episode, we began making our way through Serukai. Specifically, according to the save anyway, we are in the Noaru Valley. The name sounds familiar, but I don't know where it was mentioned that title or that area before. But all we do know is that we are tasked with trying to stop Songi from sapping the energy and life out of the great Genesis tree. I almost called it Genesis tree, which would be absolutely awful because it would result in our Rasaru dying. So that is where we left off specifically as I go ahead and cue our round of spiriting just to give you a quick recap of what to expect for this fight with Songy. You're looking at this asshole having about 48,000 HP. So that's, eh, it's not super duper high. I, I think it's a manageable amount. What really is the problem here is that Songy can deal anywhere from like 1500 to 2000 HP with each of his attacks. And I apologize if you guys hear in the background any weird sounds. I swear every time I sit down to record, shit goes down and there's someone mowing the lawn at a, in our apartment complex. So yeah, you know, that's just kind of how it goes. What can you do other than just shake it off and let's get going. So like I said, Songy can deal anywhere from 1800 to 2000 HP of damage with each of his attacks. So he absolutely is going to pack a wallop. I mean, you're gonna get to see it kind of here. Even with spiriting, he's already at about 900. Yeah, there we go. Nine, or I should say, right around that 900 mark. So if you want to, one viable strategy is to go ahead and rely on your miracle arts. I don't think that's absolutely necessary here. Noah is pretty close, but I'm just going to go all out with a row of autos and we'll just kind of take it from there and see how we want to proceed going forward. But the Miracle Arts, you know, you've seen what they can do. You've heard my spiel on them when we were taking on court that I think they're there for a reason. You know, they are the most powerful arts that you're going to have access to. But I think that the Miracle Arts are easily abusable and they're not that necessary for a lot of these fights that you will be undertaking. So that's right. Get blocked. Woo! But Noah hanging on for dear life there. But honestly, outside of that, that's the gist of the recap that I can... I shouldn't call it a recap, but I guess more of the preparatory information for you going into this fight. I'm going to spirit, spirit, and then I'm going to have... Ooh, maybe this is a bad call. I'm going to have Vaughn heal us up, Noah Spirit, and Gala Spirit as well. I think this is a little bit better because I'm worried that Songi might try to kill Noah, which, you know, wouldn't be the end of the world. We do have the items to kind of deal with that. But continuing what I was saying as we have this animation with Spoon going on, I think as for other preparatory information, you know, you guys saw at the end of our last episode that I did opt to put a warrior icon onto Gala. So you can see that since Songi will occasionally do, you know, a 1v1 type attack and he's not summoning a lot of spells, getting that occasional counterattack has been helpful during my previous confrontations with him in former playthroughs that I've undertaken. But as I noted, when fighting Tetsu, oh, Vaughn, we're just going to go ahead and auto. There goes the guy on his wonderful... Hmm, yeah, I, I'm just going to risk it. But there went the guy on his little lawnmower. So again, I sincerely apologize if you hear any of that in the background, my friends. 
But as I was saying with Tetsu, you know, you're relying on RNG when you count on the warrior icons to sort of take away one of Sangi's turns because it's not always going to happen. But it can make the difference sometimes between your party member dying or them surviving a specific round. But as always, you know, I like to encourage you guys to experiment with what kinds of combinations you want to use for your accessories. Or if this is your first time playing, I think it's kind of fun to, you know, try a fight. Maybe you'll fail, but you can learn a lot about the enemy and maybe it'll push you to be more experimental with your build. I know for me anyway, in certain games, I really don't... You know what, I'm going to take that back. I'll say in most games, I really don't take the time to use a majority of the accessories that are provided. I wouldn't say that I'm narrow-minded in what I like, but I know things that work well, and I guess I just don't really... I don't go outside of my comfort zone, and I should... I really should, you know? So there's honestly no excuse for it. But we've already got Byron Rage cute, so we're going to have at least some damage going down during this round. So outside of the warrior icon, the only other accessory that maybe I would mention you looking into would possibly be, what is it called? The defender chain, I believe. But honestly, that's it regarding things I would strongly recommend you look into. Warrior icon is okay if you're okay with the RNG factor. Defender chain is nice. Other than that, as always, you've got like the life grail and the magic grail. So, you know, if you want to rely on those Camaros, you can. But, you know, if you're going to go down that route, I think you're better off just losing a turn with spiriting and having a miracle art go out. So let's just see how this goes for me. That's a lot of me prepping you for the fight. Let's actually watch how I undertake the fight. I guess, as I was sharing for our intro, I still can't believe... I called the last episode 109. But, oh, you know what? I'm not sure if annotations are still going to be available. I think I think the announcement that YouTube slash Google made a few months ago was that they were discontinuing them in May. But I can't remember if it's the beginning of May or the end of May. Either way, that's something that I'll have to deal with. And, I mean, hopefully it shouldn't throw you guys off too much. But I don't know. If I can remember... I will throw an annotation on there. Or I shouldn't even say if I remember, if it's available, because you never fucking know. Honestly, and this is kind of a random aside and has nothing to do with gameplay. Oh no, is Noah going down? Oh. Poor Noah. Well, rest in peace, my girl, rest in peace. But that's okay, it's not the end of the world for her. I will go ahead and use a Phoenix. We have 14 of them, so it is not as though we are in... Ooh, Maybe I shouldn't do this, because what if he takes her down? Well, we're just going to have to risk it. And I'll go ahead and summon Spoon. So this is kind of a wasted turn. We're not getting any damage off, but we'll see what will happen. Oh, okay, good. He's focusing Vaughn down. And you guys will get to see how much damage he can do with something other than just a generic one-on-one -on -one auto attack. So Chaos Flare! Songy is so crazy. So a little bit shy of 1,300. We've got 1,284. But honestly, not a big deal. So this ended up being a good turn. We'll completely heal up Vaughn and we will take care of Noah. And I'm thinking Vaughn might be ready to go into full swing. But okay. <laughs> Keeping my focus on what I was starting to say. The annotations being removed, I kind of understand where YouTube is coming from. So their justification for it, for those of you who aren't too YouTube savvy, either you only use it as someone who views videos or, oh, Noah, 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 why? You know what? I'm just going to use this as an all-out turn just so we can get off as much chip damage as possible. But their justification for it is that annotations are outdated because you can't see them on mobile devices, so like your phones, tablets. Uh, I think even if you're using your video game consoles you can't see annotations so basically only pc users can see the annotations so that's one of their justifications that it's outdated and most of the consumers of youtube videos 
rely on those tablets, on those consoles, on their uh, other handheld devices such as phones. So that's one argument. They also noted that, well, we've introduced other ways for you to, you know what, I think I want to go ahead and go again. I'm going to have Noah heal us up. And I'm going to have Gala spirit up. So they mentioned that they introduced cards, which I love to use, you know, just so that I can automatically link someone who's tuning into an episode for the first time and has never watched anything else in the Let's Play series. I can link them immediately to the playlist as kind of like a pop-up icon on the screen. So that's very handy. I get where they're coming from. They introduced cards. And then most recently, they incorporated something called, I think they're end screens. I believe they're called end screens, but don't hold me to that if that is not their official title or if you're watching this at a much later date and they changed the availability of that tool or they changed the name of that tool. But I got to be honest with you guys, I don't like the end screens at all. I find them to be very abusable and invasive by certain users or certain YouTubers to where they can just display these end screens or these basically like little video displays to other videos of theirs or if they're trying to shout out another channel they have a way for you to just click on the screen itself and access you know what? we will have another oh gala you're so close let's pray that song attacks gala because then we can get off his his miracle art on this turn but anyway i think it's just easily abusable because some youtubers that i followed i have seen them just putting like display after display which someone might argue well but it's it's very accessible you can just click on the screen and go straight to the next video instead of needing to like click a little pop-up or open the really noah's dead again fuck my life or you know open up the description box and then click a specific link that you have to seek out i don't think it's a big deal but people have short attention spans and they're fucking lazy let's just be honest so again I get where YouTube is coming from in that, whoa, 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 calm down, Vaughn. I did not mean to scroll through that much. I get where YouTube is coming from in that for them, annotations truly were introduced during a different time when most consumers were relying on PCs and you know, maybe like watch times were a little bit higher and user interaction was a bit higher regarding what people were opening up and what people were clicking on. And that's just not the case anymore. I think the demographic has changed. Internet culture has changed considerably. So, you know, you even see that with a lot of YouTubers themselves where they're not as invested in making longer videos because people aren't as willing to watch them because there's been somewhat of, oh, congratulations, Gala Spoon. There's been somewhat of a shift towards how can I, oh, Vaughn, I really wish I could get your miracle art off, but sadly I cannot. But what we can do is just have this be an all out offense from everyone in our party. Regardless of whether the bar is at max capacity, we all make do. But like, I get it that there's been a shift where people want more of that instant gratification. You know, they're watching YouTube videos while they're taking a shit and they only have five minutes to spare. They're not trying to be there for 25 minutes watching your Let's Play. I completely get where they're coming from, but I still think that they could do more with annotations to make them compatible on mobiles or just leave them as they are. Why would you remove a feature even if people aren't using them as much? They still have some value. And woo, we saw Genocidal Cannon, which did pack a wallop. So I will have Noah heal us immediately in our upcoming round or upcoming sets of turns. But I just think it sucks because they're still leaving up old annotations. So they're not removing any that, you know, if you are a content creator, you opted to utilize just to convey something like what I was mentioning, how I accidentally stated in our last episode that it was episode 109 instead of, oh, do I want to? Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. I stated that it was episode 109 when it was actually one like 110. Like, I get it that they're going to leave the old ones up and that's great because that's kind of how people were using them in the past or just if they had a little note that they wanted to add in and they didn't catch it or think about it until after they edited the video or they just didn't think it was important enough to add in with an edit itself. I don't know the reasoning why someone would not would opt to always use an annotation, but there are a variety of circumstances where I think 
they're more valuable than the cards or than the end screens. Something else I think people aren't factoring in. Oh, do I want to have Noah go? No, I'm going to have her go ahead and spirit. And we'll have two miracle arts go down. So I like that we're kind of weaving between an occasional miracle art and then seeing some variation with the auto. So that's how I like to utilize the miracle arts. Just to bring it back full circle to something I said earlier about why I don't like to use them too frequently. But something that I think people don't think about with the annotations is that you actually, as a viewer, can somewhat disable them by uh, taking off, you know, the ability for annotations and things to kind of pop up. So you can remove certain displays, but guess what, you guys? End screens aren't one of them. You have no control over that. The end screens will pop up if the content creator wants them to pop up and where they want them to pop up on the screen. So if they decide to be assholes and have these in invasive, obnoxious, like four little boxes over the content, they can fucking do that. Granted, you know, it's within a very narrow range, like the end of the video, but what if you have something you wanna promote or just mention in the middle of the video? Like, I don't know. I guess I'm just kind of split. I can understand why they wanted to introduce new features, but I cannot understand the justification behind completely removing something that's quote, outdated, unquote. Like, then just, if you don't wanna put the resources and time into updating it, don't do that. But why just fucking remove it? Like, are you really losing anything by allowing people to have the control? of this feature that they had been utilizing for one, two, three, four, year, five years. I don't know when annotations were introduced, but they've been around for a while because I know I've used them in some of my older Let's Plays. I think I used them during Jade Cocoon's Story of the Tamamayu, and I did that Let's Play in 2013. So you can kind of see where I'm coming from, how I just think, great, let's move towards the cards, which I find incredibly handy, and I use them in pretty much every single video. I'm still going back and updating some older Let's Plays to have that card insert in the first like 10, 20 seconds so that people can just effortlessly click on over to my playlist if they like what they see, if they're tuning in a little bit later. You know what, whatever, we're just gonna go all out here. I think we wanna get off as much damage as possible because he's getting low and has been falling over for a little while now. So I love the cards, and I'm glad that they're putting more eggs in that basket. I'm not a huge fan of the end screen, though. And I think to suggest that having access to cards and end screens completely removes the value of the annotations, I think that's silly. Honestly, I do. And I think it's a little bit naive. And I think it's unfair on the viewer's behalf because you don't have as much control over what displays anymore. And you have to just sort of, have to just fucking sort of deal with it. If someone decides to be a dick and have a bunch of those end screen shits all up on display on the screen. Anyway, end of that rant. Just thought I would insert my opinion. I've seen a couple of people talking about it on Reddit. Like, obviously Reddit is not <laughs> a good indicator of what the mass is feel about certain features, but it seems like a lot of people support, I guess, is, I wouldn't say support in that they want annotations removed, but they're okay, I guess, just to use a very neutral, overused term with the decision, and I am just not okay with it, but I have no choice but to be okay with it because it is what it is. YouTube doesn't give a shit what I think. My channel's small, and even if it was big, I mean, we saw how they treated PewDiePie, so YouTube really doesn't give a fuck what I think some of their users think about their choices. So they definitely aren't going to give a flying fuck. Oh my god, we're not going to be able to make anything happen there. Oh, Gala is so close. So if he can just hit him, we can get another miracle art off there. It probably won't, as is my luck. And we haven't seen this fucking warrior icon do anything, have we? I don't think Gala's gotten one counterattack off. Granted, I don't think Songy has attempted to attack him when Gala was planning to attack. 
back. Oh! Well, there we go. Looks like we will be seeing a miracle art, and I was just talking shit about how the randomness usually isn't in my favor. But I'm wrong in this case. We should be rapidly approaching the conclusion of this fight, though. I would be surprised if he has more than 10,000 HP remaining. I haven't been calculating it because I've been talking. <laughs> you guys know how it goes with me. Especially when these fights are fairly straightforward and I, you know, gave you the, the expectation of what this will be and how things will unfold in the first, like, three, four minutes of the episode. I think it's all right for me to sort of just tune out and let everything be as it's going to be. You know what? I don't know... Maybe I should heal up Gala. I think I will go ahead and have Vaughn do that. I'm going to have Noah auto, and we'll just have Gala auto as well, because I'm not sure what song he's going to do. But he's driving. Oh, never mind. That was what we needed. Oh, Gala, I know your pain. I think he said songy. If someone could verify, maybe he said something in Japanese. But it sounded like he was expressing uh, somewhat of pain, yet also power in the fact that he was triumphant over this frenemy, I suppose, is the best way to describe the relationship Gala and Songi have had for the last several years of their lives. But anyway, since the fight ended up taking a little bit over 20 minutes, I am going to go ahead and part ways with you all here. I look forward to seeing you in our upcoming episode where we will allow Songi the opportunity to maybe finally apologize, but I think we can all expect he's just going to be salty and bitter because he got his ass kicked. We'll just have to wait and find out. So thanks for watching, everyone. I'm your host, Rabbit, and this is my 100% item guide and walkthrough for Legend of Lagaya. I will see you all very shortly.